we want to use the parametric equations of a cycloid to find the area that it encloses bounded by the x-axis. Here we have our parametric equations where theta is on the closed interval from zero to two pi. The graph of the cycloid is provided here below, but I also want to show an animation of how we can form a cycloid curve. If we start with a circle where one point is at the origin and we trace this point that's on the origin and on the circle, as the circle rolls along the x-axis, it will form the graph of a cycloid, as we see here. So notice after one complete rotation, we have the graph of our cycloid, which means the interval for x would be the same as the circumference of the circle, which is equal to pi times the diameter. If the circle continues to rotate or roll, notice how the pattern continues. Going back to our graph, notice how the maximum y value is six, which would have to be the diameter of the circle, and therefore this point on the x-axis would have to be equal to six times pi, which is the same as the circumference of the circle. Now to find this area bounded by the curve on the x-axis, we're going to use the fact that we know that if we had a function of x or f of x that was non-negative on the closed interval from a to b, then we could find the area by evaluating the definite integral of f of x from a to b. And we could also substitute y for f of x if we wanted to. So to find this area, we're going to use the definite integral of y with respect to x from a to b. So looking at our parametric equations, notice how we're given y and then we can find differential x since we're also given x. So we're going to write this integral in terms of theta, then determine the limits of integration in terms of theta. So again, we know that y equals three times the quantity one minus cosine theta, and then x is equal to three times the quantity theta minus sine theta, and therefore differential x would have to be three times one minus cosine theta times d theta. So now we'll perform a substitution for y and dx into our integral. So we'll have the integral of y, which is three times the quantity one minus cosine theta, times differential x, which is three times the quantity one minus cosine theta, d theta. Now before we simplify this, let's determine the limits of integration. Notice on the coordinate plane, if we were integrating in terms of x, we would have to integrate from zero to, which we now know would be six pi. So let's just make sure that when theta equals zero, x would be zero, and when theta is two pi, x would be six pi. So if we made a table of values, we want to make sure that when theta is zero, x is zero, and when theta is two pi, x would be six pi. So looking at our equation here for x, if theta was zero, we'd have x equals three times zero minus sine zero, which would be zero, three times zero is zero. So that's good news. And now when theta equals two pi, theta is two pi here, sine two pi is zero, we'd have three times two pi, which is six pi. And therefore we know the lower limit of integration would be zero, and the upper limit of integration would be two pi. Remember, these must be in terms of theta because we're integrating with respect to theta. So now let's go to the next slide and evaluate this definite integral, which will give us the area bounded by this curve in the x-axis, or the area shaded here in green. Let's begin by factoring out the two factors of three, which would give us nine times the integral of one minus cosine theta squared integrated from zero to two pi. Now let's go ahead and square the quantity one minus cosine theta. We would have one, two, three, four products. So we have one minus cosine theta minus cosine theta, that's minus two cosine theta. And then we have plus cosine squared theta. Next we'll have to apply a power reducing formula here for a cosine squared theta. So we'll use the identity given here below in red. 
but when we perform this substitution, we'll go ahead and distribute the one half. So we would have nine times the integral of one minus two cosine theta, and then we'd have plus one half plus one half cosine two theta. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms. Here we have one plus one half, that would be three halves. So now we have nine times the integral of three halves minus two cosine theta plus one half cosine two theta. Now we can go ahead and find the antiderivative. We would have nine Integrating with respect to theta, we'd have three halves theta minus two sine theta. Now here we have to perform u substitution. So if we let u equal two theta, differential u would be equal to two d theta, dividing both sides by two. Notice how we have an extra factor of one half. So we'd have plus one half times one half sine two theta. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. Notice how this would be plus one fourth sine two theta. And now we'll go ahead and evaluate this. So we'll have nine times the quantity. We'll first substitute two pi and then subtract the value when theta is equal to zero. So notice when theta is two pi, we'd have three halves times two pi, that's three pi, minus two times sine two pi, that's zero, plus one fourth sine four pi, and since sine four pi is zero, this would also be zero. And then when theta is zero, we would have zero here, minus two times sine zero, which is zero, plus one fourth sine zero, which is also zero. Notice how this simplifies nicely to nine times three pi, or 27 pi, which would be the area under the curve bounded by the x-axis. So if we go back to our graph for a moment, we just found the area of this green shaded region is exactly 27 pi square units. I hope you found this explanation helpful.